Hey y'all, welcome to the Christian Bay TV and Podcast where Christ and Culture Connects. I pray that you guys are having a wonderful day. As you guys see from the title, today we're talking about the danger of rushing, and we're coming from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 through 13. So grab your journals. So in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, what we're talking about is the story of Abraham when God asked him to sacrifice Isaac. And we all know that story. God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Abraham had to go where God told him to go and to sacrifice him but when Abraham looked up he saw a ram in the bush and that's what he sacrificed so he didn't have to sacrifice his son we all know that story right but this time when God led me to the book of Genesis chapter 22 he allowed five new things to stand out to me that I never noticed that support the importance in us not rushing and I don't know about y'all but I hate slow seasons I hate slow seasons hate is such a strong word y'all it's thunder and lightning Hate is such a strong word, but I really don't like slow seasons and I don't like silent seasons. Like I'm one of those people, if I'm walking behind you in the store and you walking slow, like I'm just like, and I'm like want to go around you because I just like to get stuff done. Like, let's just get it done. But God constantly shows me the importance of slowing down. So while reading Genesis chapter 22 and speaking to me about the importance of not rushing and slowing down in the current season that you're in, God allowed five points to stand out to me that center the topic, the danger of rushing. Let's get into it. So the first thing that God allowed to stand out to me while reading Genesis 22 is that sometimes obedience and sacrifice go hand in hand. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22 lets us know that obedience is greater than sacrifice. But what about when God asks you to do both? What about when God asks you to sacrifice and be obedient? Because a lot of times, I don't know if y'all anything like me, but I'm the type of person where it's just like, oh, I'm going to be obedient. But then if you ask me to sacrifice on top of it, it's like, dang, I got to give up something that I didn't expect to give up. And I got to be obedient and give it up in a way that you wanted me to give it. Like, that's like a double whammy, right? How God showed me that sometimes obedience and sacrifice go hand in hand. We like to reference the verse, 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22 that says, obedience is greater than sacrifice. But a lot of times, obedience and sacrifice go hand in hand. You must be obedient and sacrifice the very thing that you did not plan on or you did not want to sacrifice in verse 2 it literally says then God said take your son your only son whom you love Isaac and go to the region of Moriah sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you so I want you to be obedient and go where I'm telling you to go and I want you to sacrifice the son your only son and like God was being petty with that a little bit he said your only son whom you love I I want you to take him to where I'm going to show you and sacrifice him. And what God showed me is that God will test you to see if you love him more than the thing that you love. That important thing that you never thought you would have to sacrifice. This is when God is testing your heart and your heart will be revealed in the decision that you make. Will you choose the thing that you love over the God that gave you that thing? What do you do when God asks you to be obedient and sacrifice that job that you prayed for? What do you do when God asks you to be obedient and sacrifice that friendship that you thought was sharpening you spiritually? What do you do when God asks you to sacrifice that church that you grew up in? Sometimes obedience and sacrifice go hand in hand and God wants to test our heart to see if we love the thing that he has given us more than we love him. The second thing that God allowed to stand out to me while reading Genesis chapter 2 is that God prioritizes positioning. When you read Genesis chapter 22 and verse 2 in the MSG translation, it literally says, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I'll point out to you. When you read it in the easy translation, it says, I will show you the mountain where you must do this. When you read it in the amplified version, it says on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. When you read it in the easy to read version, it says, I will tell you which mountain. So not only was God asking Abraham to be obedient and sacrifice his only son whom he loved, he was also telling him and I'm going to tell you where to do it, but I'm not going to tell you until you get there because God prioritizes positioning. So with reading this God showed me that he doesn't just want us to be obedient and sacrifice what he wants us to sacrifice he wants us to do it how he tells us to do it don't just do what I tell you to do do it when how and where I tell you to do it every piece of the instructions is important he said go and sacrifice him on the mountain which I will show you when you get there so there are so many parts of the process and so many parts of the puzzle that will stretch us when it comes to God taking us through testing seasons I 
want you to be obedient and sacrifice the the only son that you got whom you love and then I want you to walk by faith and not by sight because I'm not going to tell you where to go when you sacrifice and be obedient and listen to my instructions I'm going to point it out to you when you get there which means that you must be tapped in spiritually to be able to hear from me because you don't have a GPS to follow you don't have a map quest to follow you don't have instructions in hand so you have to carry the weight of knowing that you're about to sacrifice your only son whom you love and you don't know where you're going you're confused and you just have to move according to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and trust that God will tell you when you have arrived because God prioritizes positioning just like obedience and sacrifice because we'll be obedient and we'll sacrifice but we want to do it how we want to do it we want to do it when we want to do it and he's using Abraham to show us that every piece of the instructions is important The next thing that God allowed to stand out to me when reading Genesis chapter two is that you can't escape the weight. And y'all, I don't like waiting seasons. I don't like waiting seasons. I'm pretty sure y'all don't like waiting seasons. But even in Genesis 22 with Abraham, even with Abraham being obedient and sacrificing his own son and listening to the instructions of God because God prioritizes positioning, Abraham still had to wait. He still had a waiting season. Imagine I'm being obedient. I'm sacrificing what you tell me to sacrifice. I'm listening to your instructions. I'm going when you tell me to go. I'm stopping when you tell me to stop. And I still got to wait. What? It literally says in verse four, on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Now, I've read this story about Abraham plenty of times, and I never realized that it says on the third day. When you read it in the easy translation, it says on the third day of the journey, which let me know that Abraham had been traveling for three days. He had been traveling to a place that he did not know where he was going. He did not know when he would stop for three days. So let's tie, so let's really tie this all together. God, you're asking me to be obedient and sacrifice the only son that I have whom I love. And you're telling me that you prioritize positioning. And then on top of that, you're going to have me traveling for three days. Imagine having me in a waiting season when I'm doing what you telling me to do. You got me in a waiting season and I'm being obedient obedient i feel like if i'm being obedient and sacrificing what you're telling me to sacrifice this process should go by quickly i'm getting in position i'm doing everything you told me to do god i started the podcast i started the tiktok i started the business i'm fasting and praying why isn't the answer prayer coming quickly why am i still in a waiting season why do you still got me traveling for three days and then the tough part about it is while he's traveling for three days let's not dismiss the weight of what he's traveling with he's traveling with the weight of knowing every day that he's getting closer to having to sacrifice his only son whom he loves see a lot of times when God calls us to be obedient and to sacrifice and to wait throughout the process we sometimes don't realize that we still have to carry the weight of whatever season we're in while we're waiting The weight doesn't get easier just because you're being obedient. The weight doesn't get easier just because you're following in the steps that God has ordered you. Abraham is showing us that we must be obedient. We must sacrifice. We must know that we're walking with this sacrifice. And every day we waking up with the weight of being obedient. And there's still going to be a weight in the process. And it doesn't sound beautiful because it's just like, God, if I'm being obedient and I'm doing what you have called me to do and it doesn't feel good, don't make me have to sit in it for a long time. But Abraham had to walk for three days knowing that he was about to sacrifice his son, knowing that you might lose this job, knowing the health report that you got, knowing that they talking about you at the job, knowing that this may not work out. God wants us to walk with the weight while we wait and trust in his way. Something else that God allowed me to see while studying this is that he was traveling for three days without nowhere in mind because he didn't know where he was going. So really, it's going to feel like you're wandering around pointlessly or aimlessly because you don't know where you're going. You're just being obedient. You're just walking. So he don't know. It it was three days, but it could have been seven days. It could have been 10 days. And that's how we feel when we're in the wait. We don't know how long the wait is going to be. But just like Abraham, God expects us 
us to wait with the weight of following his way, to wait and continue to walk with Isaac, to wait while you know that you about to sacrifice him, to wait with the emotions that come with you being obedient, to wait with the tears, to wait with the headache, to wait with the frustration of knowing that God is asking you to sacrifice something that you never thought you have to give up. God is saying, I want you to wait while carrying the weight. And then you don't know how long you're going to be waiting. You don't know how long you're going to be wondering, but I want you to trust in my will above all of that. This shows us that even when we're being obedient, even when we're doing what God has told us to do and sacrificing, we cannot escape the weight. It could have been six days. It could have been eight days. It could have been 10 days. He just had to keep walking and keep being obedient with the sacrifice because you cannot escape the weight. And I don't know about y'all, but I feel like, God, if I'm doing what you called me to do, I shouldn't have to go through a waiting season. I want an overnight success. I want it rapidly. I want it, I want it quickly. You told me to start the business. I started the business. Well, I'm not rich yet. You told me to create the podcast. I created the podcast. Well, I don't got a million views. Well, I don't have a million plays yet. You told me to start the business. Well, I don't have a million sales yet. I think that when I'm obedient and when I sacrifice my will for his will, that it should be instant success, instant abundance, instant overflow. But even Abraham has shown us that you cannot escape the weight. The fourth thing that got a lot to stand out to me while reading Genesis chapter 22 is what is worship? Honoring God in his word. Worship is whatever God tells you to do. That's what worship is. I know I would usually think of worship as praise and worship and singing songs. And I thought of worship that way until I read verse five, where it says, he said to his servants, and it's talking about Abraham. It says, he said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. He was going to sacrifice his son, but he said, we will worship and then return back to you. Because even though he was going to sacrifice his son, that's considered worship because it's honoring God's word and honoring God's will. A lot of times when we're doing things that we don't want to do, we don't look at those things as worship because it doesn't feel good to our flesh. But Abraham is showing us that anything that aligns with God's word and God's will is worshiping him because you're moving according to his instructions. You're moving according to the steps that he has ordered for you. So you are worshiping him. It's not just praise and worship when it comes to singing. It's worshiping him when you pray every day. It's worshiping him when you read your devotional. It's worshiping him when you fast. You're worshiping him when you pay your tithes and offering. You're worshiping him when you get amongst wise counsel. You're worshiping him when you fellowship amongst your godly community. Anything that aligns with the word of God, with the will of God is considered worshiping him even even when it doesn't feel good to your flesh. I know you wouldn't look at leaving that job as a form of worship, but if God told you to leave, then you're worshiping him. If God told you to leave the relationship, then you're worshiping him because you're putting your trust and your faith in his word. Oftentimes we don't view painful or heavy waiting seasons as worship, but Abraham is showing us that being obedient and doing what God has called us to do and asked us to do is worshiping who we love the most. And that's God. The fifth thing that God allowed to stand out to me is flesh versus instructions. And this is where the danger of rushing comes in. In Genesis chapter 22, verse nine, it says, when they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to Abraham from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy. He said, do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over there and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. What God allowed to stand out to me in this verse is that when they reached the place where God had told him, every part of this process required him listening to God's instructions. Every part of this process required him to do what the Holy Spirit was telling him to do. He didn't have time to listen to his flesh. He didn't have time to listen to his emotions. And I don't know about y'all, but when I go through heavy waiting seasons and seasons where God is stripping me and I'm sacrificing this and I'm being obedient, it is very hard for me to not get in my head. It is very hard for me to not get in my feelings, especially if I'm sacrificing something that I love. Let's really put ourselves in the shoes of Abraham. This is your one 
one and only son whom you love, God is asking you to sacrifice him. While I was walking them three days, I would have been crying the whole time. I don't know if I would have heard from the Holy Spirit because my tears would have been clogging my ears. I can't even think straight because I'm so deep in my feelings. But God allowed me to see while reading this that Abraham had to be so in tune with the instructions of God that he didn't have time to be caught up in his feelings, that he didn't have time to be consumed by his flesh because every part of this process included and required God's instructions. If Abraham would have got caught up in his feelings and been crying and holding on to Isaac and not wanting to be obedient, he would have missed the mountain that, that God was telling him to go to. If Abraham would have been crying and in his feelings, would he have been able to hear the angel say, Abraham, Abraham, if Abraham would have been trying to rush the process and hurry up and get it over with and hurry up and sacrifice his son, he probably would have hurry up and slayed him, not knowing that the angel was going to call out and tell him to stop. This is the danger of trying to rush the process that God has for you. Because when we begin to rush, it's because we're moving based on our feelings. And I, I don't know about y'all, but when I don't feel like doing something, I start fasting. That's what I'm going to call it. You fasting. You trying to move too quick. And every time I try to fast and do something quick, something will drop. Y'all ever be trying to hurry up and do something and then you drop it. Now you got to clean up the mess you just made. Or you trying to hurry up and walk out the door and your clothes get stuck to the door. That is the worst, y'all. It's just like, oh my gosh, I'm already frustrated. I'm already fasting. I'm already in my head thinking about something else. I'm already in my feelings. So I'm trying to move fast and me trying to move fast is causing me to make a mess. Me trying to move fast is getting me out of alignment. Me trying to move fast is actually making it worse than it was before I even started imagine if Abraham was trying to move fast that's the danger of rushing he would have killed his son and I don't know about y'all but I could really relate to this because when God asked me to sacrifice things I will get in my feelings just like well God like you really want me to and this is the son that I prayed for and you told me to do this in the previous like I will get in my head and start trying to figure out why is one plus one not equal to two because why would you give it to me just for me to sacrifice it but what God has shown me with Genesis 22 is that when we start getting in our head and start trying to lean on our own understanding and figure it out ourselves we're missing out on instructions. Abraham didn't have time to sit and get in his head about why he had to sacrifice Isaac because God said, go to where I will show you. And I'm not going to give you a GPS. I'm not going to give you a step-by-step -step directions, which means as you're walking, you're going to have to be listening to my instructions, not listening to your thoughts, not listening to your feelings, not listening to your flesh. And then not only that, after traveling for three days and having to depend on me to tell you when to stop, then I'm going to have to tell you what mountain to go and sacrifice him to. So you're going to have to take every thought captive, take every feeling captive, take every emotion captive and make it submit to the word of God and focus on what God is telling you to do. Because when God tells us to be obedient and sacrifice, that's just the first part of the process. That's just the first instructions. It's some more instructions after that. But if you get in your feelings and tap out of the spiritual realm now you're missing out on the rest of the process God showed me that he was still releasing instructions while Abraham was processing the fact that God asked him to sacrifice his only son and after God showed me that I wrote down don't let your feelings mute the voice of God quiet your mind so you can hear because Abraham's mind was quiet enough to hear instructions, he heard the angel call his name and stop him from slaughtering his son. And this goes back to the danger of rushing. Because y'all, I gotta be honest. If I, if God would have called me to be obedient and sacrifice my only son after traveling for three days, waiting on you to show me the mountain, then I get to the mountain and I know that this is what I gotta do, I would have did it so quick. You know what? Let's just go ahead and get this over with. Let's just get it over with because I'm already already pissed off like I would have did it so quick y'all because I just want to get it over with and that's the danger of trying to rush the season that God has you in trying to rush the process because you don't know when God is gonna throw in the plot twist you don't know that's why we must be patient and we must not lean on our own understanding because just because I told you to do that doesn't mean in the next second I'm gonna tell you to do that God told him to sacrifice his only son and then God said, stop, sent the angel to say, stop, don't touch him. Don't lay a hand on him. So imagine you trying to rush your process because you think you know what God is telling you to do. And God is going to tell you to do something else later on. 
but you think you know so much. You're leaning on your own understanding. And that's the tricky part about it, y'all, is that is what God told him to do. But the thing is, God can say, do this in one season and do something else in another season. He's teaching us how to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and follow his instructions every step of the way. That's what God is teaching us with this. The danger of rushing is when you begin to rush, it's because you think you know what's coming next, but you don't. And Abraham didn't either. And that's why we must not rush our process, but continue to move according to the promptings of God and God only. The last thing that God allowed to stand out to me is verse 13. It says, Abraham looked up and there in the thicket, he saw a ram caught by his horns. And when God allowed this to stand out to me, I wrote down, what are you listening to and where are you looking? Because it wasn't just the fact that Abraham was listening to what the angel said. Abraham also had to look up to see the ram. Because what if Abraham was listening to the angel, but still looking at Isaac? It required him looking up to see the ram. And I wrote down, imagine if Abraham was moving based off of emotion and trying to hurry up and get it over with and did it real fast without knowing that the angel was going to call out. This is why God doesn't want us to move out of emotion because it makes us try to speed up the hard seasons and it also makes us get in our head, which makes it hard to hear. Then we end up making it harder or worse on ourselves because we're fasting. This is your reminder to slow down and look around. The answer to your prayers are often hidden in the seasons that you try to rush through. Let me say that again. The answers to your prayers are often hidden in the seasons that you try to rush through. Slow down and look around. And that's today's seed, the look around seed. Slow down and look around. And I promise you, you will see that the very thing that you've been praying for is either in front of you or you can see pieces of the process revealed. You can see how the steps are being ordered for you to get the very thing that you've been asking for. I can almost guarantee you that while Abraham was traveling for those three days, he was praying for God to make a way. I can almost guarantee you that while Abraham was walking to that mountain, he was praying for God to change his mind. And then the whole time Abraham told Isaac, God will provide and God did just that. But Abraham had to stop and look around to see it and this is the danger of rushing because when you rush you don't see everything that God is doing it didn't say that the lamb it didn't say that the ram ran up to Abraham it didn't say that the ram was making any noise it didn't say that the ram just said hey here I am use me instead and this is the importance of listening to God's instructions God said I'm gonna tell you what mountain to go to imagine if Abraham would have went to a different mountain imagine if Abraham would have been in his feelings and not listening to God's instructions and he went to a different mountain and that mountain wouldn't have had a ram in the bush. So every part of the process, God is so intentional with it. I know that God knew that it was a ram in the bush near that mountain. And this is why it's important for us not to get in our head, not to get in our feelings, but to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, to listen to God's instructions because God prioritizes positioning and he knows where to place us so that our prayers can get answered in ways that we never would have imagined. And this is the danger of rushing. Because when Abraham looked up and looked around, he saw the ram in the bush next to the mountain that God led him to. And he didn't have to sacrifice the thing that he loved. And I also feel the Holy Spirit showing me that because Abraham was obedient to God and loved God and followed God's instructions that led to him being properly positioned to the point to where he got to keep the thing that he loved, which was his son. God is so good that God was just showing him that if you listen to me and if you love me, I will position you in a way where you get to keep the thing that you love. That's how good God is. Y'all, God does not want us to be in pain. God does not want us to lose the things that we love. He's just testing us to see if we love those things more than him. And he's so strategic and so good that he will position us in a way where we can keep the thing that we love if we show how much we love him. So listen to my instructions and allow me to lead you through the waiting season for three days and to tell you what mountain to go to. And if you love me enough to listen, I will place you or position you in a mountain where you get to keep the thing that you love.
where you also get to keep the thing that you didn't want to sacrifice anyways. Y'all, God is so good. Really think about this, how God took him through the process of testing his heart just so he can keep the very thing that he wanted from the start. And it literally says in the beginning of Genesis chapter 22, it starts off with saying sometimes later, for God tested Abraham. It was all a test to see if you love me enough to carry and keep this thing that I'm asking you to sacrifice while I take you through this process, while I take you through this journey with the mindset of me taking away the very thing that you love. Imagine that. Imagine you telling your, like, y'all, I really want y'all to get this. Imagine you telling your child, bring me that car that I bought you because I'm finna take it from you. But before you bring it to me, stop and go pick up my medicine and stop and go over there and get some gas for it and stop and pick up this. You take them on a whole journey and the whole time they going on that journey, they know they about to lose the car. But when they get to you, you actually got a new car for them. They're going to have two cars now, but you just wanted to see if they would sacrifice it. You just want, and that wasn't really a good example, but I really can't break down the goodness of God and how good he is for really taking Abraham through this process and positioning him in a place where he doesn't have to give up his son. Because if Abraham would have went to a mountain of his choice, if Abraham would have went to a mountain that was chosen by his emotions or his feelings, he would have had to sacrifice his son. And that's the danger of rushing. So today I challenge you to not rush through this season, but to look up and look around and trust what God is doing because he's good. Even when we don't understand the way that he's doing it, he's still good. But I'm gonna wrap it up here because I could keep going because I like the, the, the goodness of God and all of this process to still let Abraham keep Isaac and position him in a way so that he could keep it. It's just like, I'm actually, I'm actually doing this for you. You think I'm taking you through a journey because I like to see you in pain and I like to see you wait, but I'm actually positioning you for what you want. Like God is so good. Let those who have ears hear because I, I could keep going because I really want y'all to get this, but this is your reminder to slow down and look around. The answer to your prayers are often hidden in the seasons that you try to rush through. And if you want to sow the look around seed, that information will be in the description. Let's pray. Father God, first and foremost, thank you for waking us up and blessing us with another day. Father God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be on this podcast. Thank you for using me as your vessel to speak on this podcast. Father God, thank you for today's revelation. Father God, thank you for showing us that even when you call us to be obedient and to sacrifice those things that we love, Father God, that you are still such a good father, that you are taking us through the waiting season. You're taking us through a journey that doesn't feel good while we're going through it, Father God, that you are such a good God that it's still going to work for our our good father God thank you for showing us how you were just testing Abraham to see his heart and how all along you positioned him in a way where he could keep the son that he loved father God as long as he showed that he loved you more father God. father God so today I just pray for our process I pray for our waiting season father God that we don't get in our head father God that we don't allow our emotions or our flesh to lead to us making decisions that co that come from us leaning on our own understanding father God that we stay connected to the spiritual realm and that we move when you tell us to move father God because Romans 8 28 tells us that all things work together for our good father God and you have shown us that in Genesis 22 father God so I cast down our desire to move according to our feelings I cast down our desire to move according to our flesh father God and I call forth our spirit man to rise up father God and to help us walk in the steps that you order for us father God I pray and I claim that obedience is our portion portion father God I pray and I claim that discipline is our portion father Father God, that we will take every thought captive and make it submit to your word, Father God, that we don't move based on how we feel or what we think is best, Father God, but that we only live according to your word and your will, Father God, because you have shown us time and time again that you know what is best, that you have our best interest at heart, Father God. So we thank you for using Genesis 22 as an example of why it's important or the danger of rushing, Father God. We thank you for using it as a reminder for us to look around and to be content in the season that you have us in father God because all the steps are working for our good it's all falling in line it's all falling in place even when we don't understand it even when we don't realize it father God we just must slow down and look around because you are such a good father that you cause all the pieces of the puzzle to work together we just must continue to move according to our love for you 
and you only, Father God. Today we sow the look around seed. And we trust the season that you have us in because we understand that a lot of times the answers to our prayers is hidden in the seasons that we're trying to rush through. So today we sow the look around seed and we make a promise that we will not rush through the season that you have us in, but that we will be content, not because we're confident in ourselves, but because we're confident in you and your will and the steps that you have ordered for us. We love you and we'll forever praise your name. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching another episode of the Christian Bay TV and podcast. I'll talk to you guys on the next episode. Bye.